Cairn Review, Print Speaking to the Blind, celebrating 40 years of audio newspaper production. Welcome to this week's edition of the Kirkintill Herald podcast, recorded at the Bishop Riggs Media Centre by our amazing volunteers. You can get in touch with us via Facebook, Twitter or Instagram using at Cairn Review. That is at symbol C-U-E-A-N-D-R-E-V-I-E-W. You can also contact us directly by emailing information at tunereview.com. That is I-N-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N at symbol C-U-E-A-N-D-R-E-V-I-E-W dot C-O-M. Or by calling 0141 772 That's 0141 772 the Kirk and Tullock Herald podcast, date Wednesday the 29th of May 2024, is read to you by volunteers Corey, Ian, Philip and Rebecca. Beware of the scammers. Police are warning people to be on their guard after a spate of recent bank frauds and attempted fraud incidents. Scammers have targeted several older residents in Eastern Bartonshire who have been defrauded of four and five figure sums of money. The cases all followed the same pattern. The scammers typically contact their victims by phone at home and claim to be police officers. The scammers say they have concerns regarding the fraudulent use of the ba- victim's bank card and they convince a member of the public they are genuine. Victims are then asked to attend a bank or post office and withdraw money to assist with a police investigation. This money is later collected at the victim's home by a person impersonating a plainclothes police officer. Police are stressed. They will never attend someone's home to collect cash or bank cards. They added that police officers or the bank will never phone you and ask you to transfer or withdraw money. They urged anyone who is unsure to verify it via a trusted method such as calling the number on the back of your bank card. The message is Do not call the phone numbers provided to you by a scammer. Local Area Commander for Eastern Bartonshire, Chief Inspector Aidan Higgins, said, I would like to reassure everyone that extensive inquiries are being carried out by a team of specialist officers to identify those responsible. Chief Inspector Aidan Higgins added, I would like everyone to be aware of this scam and to be vigilant. I would ask anyone with elderly relatives or neighbours to make them aware of this fraud as soon as possible. Police officers or your bank will never ask you to transfer money to another account or withdraw money from your account. They will never ask you to disclose personal financial information. Police or bank officials will never telephone you and ask you to withdraw funds to be collected later from you at home. These callous criminals prey on vulnerable people in our communities. They go to great lengths to appear legitimate, including having your personal details. The victims are persuaded to believe that they are assisting with a police investigation and are extremely upset and distressed when they find out they have been the victim of fraud. If you receive a call of this nature, do not engage with the caller and hang up. It is a scam. If you are unsure, take a few moments to think. If you can, note the caller's telephone number, hang up and contact police on 101. He added the simple message is, this is a scam. Hang up the phone and do not engage. Anyone with concerns can call police on 101. Residents can also get information on how to stay safe and avoid scammers by visiting Trading Standards Scotland website where there are more details of how the cooks target people, particularly the vulnerable. This Week in History, read by me, Ian McKenna. June the 1st, 1966. Folk fans at the Royal Albert Hall booed Bob Dylan for performing with an electric guitar. June the 2nd, 1954. Lester Piggott, at 18, became the youngest jockey to win the Derby when he rode Never Say Die to victory at Epsom. The Colt, a 33-1 outsider, won by two lengths. On this day last year, For the first time ever, scientists were able to reveal the full genetic diversity and evolutionary history of primates, the group that includes monkeys, apes, lemurs and humans. 
June the 3rd, 1937, the Duke of Windsor, the abdicated King Edward VIII, married Mrs. Wallace Warfield Simpson in France. June the 4th, 1937, the world's first supermarket trolleys trundled down the grocery aisles. Sylvan and Gorman of Oklahoma built his push baskets by fixing baskets and wheels to children's chairs. On this day last year, the King was to give up his home in Wales, a former coach house and farm buildings on the edge of the Brecon Beacons, it was announced. June 5th, 1989, in Poland, Solidarity defeated the Communists in the first three elections since the end of the Second World War. On this day last year, a pill taken once a day could cut the risk of dying from lung cancer by half. Unprecedented results from a decade-long global study revealed. Children in a spin as new play park opens. Youngsters are having a lot of fun with a new play facility in Waterside. The play area, built by Eastern Bartonshire Council, opened at the beginning of May and is already proving highly popular with the local community. It contains a wide variety of equipment, with the winning design voted for by the residents of Waterside. Councillor Pamela Marshall, Vice Convener of the Council's Place, Neighbourhood and Corporate Assets Committee, officially opened the impressive new £150,000 play facility, along with children from Gart Corner Primary School and Woodland View School and members of Waterside Community Council. The new play area which was funded through a play space contribution, prim- primarily due to the construction of the adjacent Woodland View School, includes equipment that can be enjoyed by children of all ages and abilities. Councillor Marshall said, This play area is a stunning new facility, and I know it has been something the residents of Waterside have been wanted for, wanting for a while. Consultation was key to the creation of this project, Working in conjunction with Waterside Community Council, several consultations have taken place over the years that led to the creation of a Waterside Community Action Plan and a Waterside Green Space Improvement Plan. It was through these consultations that the location for the new play area was chosen. The local community then had the final say on what play area they wanted from a choice of three designs at an all-day voting event held in the village last December. The end result is a fabulous new play area that already seems to be hugely popular with the young people of the Waterside area, and I'm sure this will be well used for many years to come. The new facility includes a double bay set of swings containing an inclusive swing. For younger children, there are two cradle swings and a carer and tot swing the first of its kind in eastern Bartonshire, which allows an adult and small child to swim, swing together. In addition, there is a large rope swing, two flat swings and a popular basket swing, while an impressive multiplay unit also contains a large chute and play panels. Youngsters will also be able to spin thanks to two, sprinkles, two springies and an inclusive roundabout. Read by Rebecca. Time to lend a helping hand. ASDA colleagues from all over Scotland will lend a helping hand in their local communities as part of this year's Big Help Out initiative, which takes place on June the 7th to 9th. The Big Help Out will see thousands of organisations come together to help clean up the community, and ASDA is encouraging people to volunteer with their local grassroots clubs which are hugely reliant on fundraising and volunteers to support their life-changing work. This comes after a report found a lack of volunteers is holding back the potential in the UK's sport and physical activity sectors, while ASDA's Community Tracker report found that 43% of its customers will be likely to get involved in local volunteering opportunities. As official partner of the Big Help Out, ASDA asks its store community champions to nominate areas it could do with a little bit of help to create a better outdoor community space. ASDA will hold over 350 litter picks at grassroots groups across the UK 
to support the volunteering drive. Through its network of stores and 390 community champions, the aim is to build connected communities, strengthen resilience and to remove barriers to health and well-being for all. Whether it's through the litter picks, like the many being arranged by Asda's community champions, or volunteering at a local group, just a small amount of time can make a massive difference and the Big Help Out app makes it simple to find options in your local area. Safety checks. Tenants of Eastern Bartonshire Council have been reminded that contractors are con- are continuing to carry out electrical safety testing. This work allows the local authority to examine the condition of the wiring in homes against safety standards. They give an insu- assurance that disruption is minimal and these checks are vital to keeping people's homes, family and neighbours safe. The council will be writing to all the tenants whose homes are now due for their five yearly safety checks. If you receive a letter, you must contact, then contact the appoint, appointed contractor, MP Group, on 0141 237 1970 or email office at mpgroupuk.com That's O F F I C E at sign mpgroup UK doc com. Anyone who has any questions can contact the council's electrical safety team at electrical dot safety at eastonbarton dot gov dot uk. That's e l e c t r i c a l dot s a f t e t y at sign e a s t d u n B E R T O N dot G O V dot U K or call zero three zero zero one two three four five one zero Benefits from free bus travel. Almost fourteen thousand young people in eastern Bartonshire have signed up for free bus travel. Across the country, over 137 million free bus pass journeys have been now been taken, allowing young people to travel for work or education. The initiative was initially over for those under 19, but then expanded to all those under 22. Scotland is the only country in the UK to offer free bus pass travel for all young people. Ross Greer, the Scottish Green, says MSP for Eastern Bartonshire, said the free bus travel scheme for under 22s has been transformative and in some cases life-changing for young people in Eastern Bartonshire. I'd encourage anyone who hasn't yet registered to do so today at freebus.scot. Exhibitions at Must See Ceramicist Michelle Young Hares officially opened Mogai Art Club's 2024 exhibition at the Lily Art Gallery on Saturday, May the 18th. Running until Thursday, June the 13th, the exhibition promises to be yet another blockbuster event with a programme presenting a wide range of exciting and diverse themes. On Saturday, June the 1st, people from all over Eastern Bartonshire are invited to celebrate Mogai Week at the gallery where the artists and residents will be available to chat with visitors and complimentary tea and coffee will be served. Councillor Jim Gibbons, Eastern Bartonshire Leveson and Cultural Trust Chairman, said, For more than a hundred years, Mogai Art Club has been an iconic community-based focal point for those actively involved in creating and displaying art for the mutual enjoyment of themselves and other art enthusiasts. The club's annual exhibition is a must-see for locals, we have some very, very talented artists in our community. Milgai Art Club treasures its rich history and the extraordinary characters who have been associated with it across the decades, including Mary and Neil Armour, founding members of the Milgai Art Club. Mary's renown as an artist led her to become honorary president of the Glasgow School of Art and the Royal Glasgow Institute of Fine Arts. Robert Lilly, 
whose legacy founded the Mulgai's Lily Gallery in 1962, which became a platform for promoting not only Mulgai Art Club, but the arts in general. Joan Airdley, popular Scottish artist remembered for her unique style depicted in her paintings of street children, portraiture and of the Scottish landscape. Councillor Gibbons added, The Mulgai Art Club exhibition is one of the highlights of the year at Lily Art Gallery and we would encourage people to come along and support our local artists. The exhibition runs until Thursday, June the 13th and the gallery is open Tuesday to Saturday from 10am to 1pm and 2pm to 5pm. Mulgai Art Club currently operates a two-tier membership system, one for those who actively participate in exhibitions and one for those who do not. The club welcomes those with a professional or amateur interest in the arts as an artist or an, as an observer. To find out more, visit www.mulgaiartclub.co.uk That's www.milngaviartclub.co.uk Right Care for Young Parents are being assured that NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde is committed to ensuring children receive the right care at the right place. In a message to parents and carers, they said the redirection policy ensures every child receives care in the most appropriate setting for their needs. A spokesman for the health board said, If you attend A and E with your child, and their condition is not life-threatening, there is a chance you may be redirected. When you attend A&D with your, your child will be seen by a highly skilled member of a emergency team who will assess their care requirements and will provide advice on the next steps. This process is called triage. If your child's condition is identified to be appropriate for redirection to a minor injury unit, MIU, you will be redirected from the emergency department to attend that unit directly or given an appointment to attend the following day. All appropriate first aid measures, such as pain relief and wound care, will be provided as needed. They added that this process was designed to streamline paediatric care delivery and would ensure timely access to specialist care for children across the health board. Throughout the process, children required specialist medical care will receive prompt access to appropriate medical services. Out with the A&E department, ultimately reducing waiting times, enhancing patients' outcome and improving health care experiences for children and their families. Scott Davison, Deputy Medical Director for Acute Services, said, A redirection policy is in place to ensure children receive the best and most appropriate care for their needs. At NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde, we are committed to providing the best possible care for our children and young patients, and through our redirection process, we can direct patients to the most suitable pathways that can reduce the amount of time spent in hospitals. We would also encourage parents to call NHS 24 on 111 if they believe their child's condition is urgent but non-life-threatening. If your child's condition is very urgent or life-threatening, you should always call 999. Warning of council strikes. Councils are facing a summer of discontent after a pay award was rejected. Unite rejected the latest pay offer from the Convention of Scottish Local Authorities, COSLA, which would see council staff get a 2.2% pay hike from April this year, with a further 2% increase in the start of October 2024. The union said it rejected the offer and the proposal to change the pay anniversary date from April to October on the basis that this is nothing but an attempt to kick the can down the road. Unite General Secretary Sharon Graham said, COSLA has taken months to put forward a, to put a formal pay offer to our local government membership and it's a derisory one at that. Unite's representative rightly rejected this offer outright. 
confirming it is preparing to ballot key groups of its local government membership across Scotland. Unite said it will announce the details of the industrial action ballot next week and warned it is moving full steam ahead towards industrial action this summer. Hillhead praised by education inspectors. A primary school and nursery class has received a good report from education inspectors. The visit to Hillhead Primary School in February this year identified several key strengths as well as some areas where there can be improvement. Inspectors were impressed by the strength of the head teacher's leadership and the support of the staff team, which they said had established a culture of respect and a positive nurturing and supporting of the environment. They added that this was similar in the nursery class, where children are supported well by the team of practitioners who have created a welcoming environment. They said the benefit of this was children behave well and engage effectively in their learning. Inspectors also found that teachers knew the youngsters in their classes very well and when the children needed additional help, they were well supported. All teachers know children in their classes very well. Children who require additional support with their learning are supported well with their specific areas of need. A significant improvement in literacy skills was seen as, seen as senior leaders and staff in the primary school, supported by key partners, had established a strong culture of reading. Arrangements for children to transition from nursery to school were also noted to be well planned. Education Scotland's inspectors identified areas for improvement and discussed these with head teacher James Friel and a representative from Eastern Bartonshire Council. These included that staff should increase the level of challenge for children in the school in the, in the nursery and encourage and support children to be more aspirational and ambitious for success. This includes continuing to raise attainment, particularly in writing. They added, Senior leaders and teachers should continue to focus on the development of key skills and highlight these more regularly in lessons. This will support children to understand, express and acknowledge their skills and do these in a range of new and unfamiliar situations. Inspectors said that they are confident the school has the capacity to improve and will make no more visits in connection with this inspection. The council has made parents and carers aware of the school's progress. Time to walk. Scotland's walking charity is calling on businesses across the area to get walking at work. The Pass for All Walk at Work Award recognises employers across the country who help to promote everyday walking in their workplace, creating a healthier workforce, both physically and mentally. Aimed at encouraging workplaces around the country to explore different ways to get staff active in or around the working day, the award scheme also promotes well-being and a green environment in the workplace. Kevin Lafferty, CEO of Pass for All, said, Walking a little more each day has proven benefits to mental and physical health, which is why it's important that we recognise the workplaces who have received the Walk at Work Award. It is an important scheme which can benefit businesses to not only get fitter but to also help improve the environment. Nominate your champ. People are being urged to nominate the person they believe has best made an outstanding contribution to their community. Provost Gillian Rennick launched the Eastern Barnshire Champion Awards last year to recognise those who had gone above and beyond to help their neighbours. The inaugural awards acknowledged the inspiring work of seven local people who were all nominated by friends, family, neighbours and colleagues for the fantastic work they do to support others and improve their local area. This year, the awards are back and there is just over a week to nominate someone you think deserves their moment in the spotlight. Closing date is June the 6th. The 2024 Community Champion Awards have the following six categories. Community Champion Young Champion Caring Champion Sports Champion Arts and Heritage Champion and Sustainability Champion Provost Rennick said Our winners last year were so inspiring and both the Deputy 
Vost and I enjoyed meeting them all and getting to hear more about the fantastic work they do. I'm pleased to announce that we're now looking for nominations for the 2024 awards. Nominees should demonstrate inspiring qualities and the role they carry out or the project they're involved in should have brought about positive change. You may know someone who has volunteered in their community, spends their free time ensuring Eastern Barkingshire's heritage is preserved, or is active in working to improve sustainability and mitigate climate change to- locally. The Deputy Provost and I will then judge all the submissions and will announce their winners on Friday, June the 14th. Good luck, and I can't wait to read all of the entries. To be considered for an award, nominees must live, work or attend school or college in East Bartonshire. Details of the award categories, the eligibility criteria, and to complete the online application form, visit the Provost page on the Council website. The Provost will invite all winners to attend the civic reception at the gala night of the Kirkintilla Canal Festival on Saturday, August 31st. Tesco supports Red Cross. A partnership which started with a £1,000 donation has seen supermarket giants Tesco give £27 million to the British Red Cross in 27 years. The first donation was to the Princess Diana landmine campaign and, since then, they have supported numerous appeals. To mark almost three decades of support, the retailer has donated £250,000 this month to the British Red Cross Disaster Fund. Since its inception, the collaboration has focused on both financial and practical support, with corporate donations and funds raised through customer initiatives and employee fundraising. As well as being a founding member of the British Red Cross's Disasters, Disaster Relief Alliance, Tesco has demonstrated its commitment to preparedness and response during emergencies. This includes Scotland, where the Inverness Tesco store help support both British Red Cross teams and the local community in dealing with the aftermath of Storm Garrett. Recording its heritage. Charity charts its long history. The 113 year story of a Scottish charity that supports reconnecting adopted people and birth families will now be told in full. Thanks to funding from the National Lottery Heritage Fund, Birthlink will be able to catalogue its archives and share the history of the agency. First established in 1911, the charity has been awarded £66,586 to fund the project. The charity has extensive records that include the origins of Claremont Park, Mother and Baby Home, the Children's Home Edsel Lodge and the first ever charity shop in Scotland. The project will create digital learning resources for the public and train storytellers to share Birthlink's story in the lights of nursing homes, schools and groups. Abby Jackson, Interim Chief Executive said, We cannot thank National Lottery players enough for this opportunity. It is so important for Scotland that this history is preserved, honoured and shared. I think all of the people the agency has had an impact on in the past 113 years. This work is for them their children, grandchildren and communities. There is no other agency like this and I am really looking forward to seeing this project develop into something very special. Birthlink was established in 1911 and owns and manages the Adoption Contact Register for Scotland which began in 1984. All people aged 16 or over whose birth and or adoption took place in Scotland can register, as well as birth mothers birth fathers and any other birth relatives. The charity also offers a search service where trained volunteers, volunteer genealogists, find the contacts people are looking for from public records. After matches are made in the register or people are located, service users can choose to enter into a period of mediation to reunite with estranged family members if this is their mutual wish. The adoption contract register also gives siblings an opportunity to reunite if they were separated in childhood. This service extends to accessing original court papers relating to adoption on behalf of service users who may not be able to travel to the National Records of Scotland and Edinburgh. Birthlink also operates the After Adoption Information Line 
where anyone affected by adoption can seek advice and support. This is also used as a consultation service, open to professionals seeking support on casework. Expertise is also shared with local authorities through a quarterly professionals forum and various bespoke training is regularly delivered on request. Separately, Birthlink is funded by Future Pathways to undertake subject access requests for people seeking to understand their time and care. The agency is also funded specifically to support people seeking to access their care records in preparation for the application to redress Scotland. Register founded. Birthlink established the Adoption Contact Register for Scotland in 1984. This enables birth parents, adopted people and their relatives to place their names on the register with the potential of finding a match with a member who is also seeking to be reunited. Birthlink offers a free professional mediation service to families who wish to reconnect. It also operates the After Adoption Information Line which is open to professionals and the public for advice and support relating to any matter relating to adoption. To find out more about the charity and how it can help you, visit www.birthlink.org.uk That's www.birthlink.org.uk Make sure you're ready for the election. Scots are being urged to be aware of the voting rules for the upcoming general election, with the registration deadline already less than four weeks away. Advice Direct Scotland said people who are intending to cast a vote in the election on July the 4th must register before midnight on Tuesday, June 18th. It is also reminding Scots who will be abroad on holiday on the day of the election or supporting the national team at Euro 2024 in Germany that they can switch to a postal or proxy vote. To be allowed to vote, people must be aged 18 or over on the day of the election and be a British, Republic of Ireland or qualifying Commonwealth citizen. They must also have registered to vote ahead of time, which they can do online on the UK government's website using their national insurance number. Once someone is registered, they can either vote in person at a polling station, cast a postal vote or assign a proxy voter to fill out the ballot on their behalf. Postal voting is usually suitable for those who know that they're going to be away from home on the day of the election, either elsewhere in the UK or abroad. People who want to vote by post can do so by applying online on the UK government website or by filling in a postal form. The deadline is 5pm on June 19th. Proxy voting is available to those who are away on polling day, are registered as overseas voters, have medical issues or disabilities, or are unavailable due to work or military service. The person casting the vote in their name will have to be registered to vote in the election. People who would like to vote by proxy can apply online on the government website or by post by 5pm on June 26th. For the first time at a UK general election, people voting at a polling station will also need to show photo identification. Valid forms of ID include a UK photocard driving licence, for provisional, or a UK slash EU passport. People who do not have any form of photo ID can apply for a voter authority certificate for free through the UK government website. The deadline is 5pm in June 26th. Andrew Bartlett, Advice Director Scotland Chief Executive said, Rishi Sunak's decision to call a general election on July the 4th has taken a lot of people by surprise, so it's important that Scots are prepared. The key things to remember is that you have to be on the electoral register to vote and will need to take a suitable form of ID to the polling station. Given this election takes place during the school holidays, thousands of people will also be abroad, but this doesn't mean they can't vote. We urge holidaymakers and Tartan Armour members who will be in Germany for Euro 2024 to switch to a postal or proxy ballot. Future Roots Fund Funding for unique environmental projects designed by young people for, for young people has been announced by Nature Scott. 
Anyone between 11 and 26 can apply to the Future Roots Fund with ideas that directly connect young people with nature and help improve their environment. Nature Scott is launching the next round of the scheme with £20,000 in funding. Individuals can apply for funding of between £500 to £2,000, while teams can apply for £1,000 to £5,000. Successful projects will be needed to deliver by November the 30th this year. The application period runs until July the 19th, and successful recipients will be announced in July. Engagement officer Shivanka Gautam said, We look forward to seeing the creativity behind the applications and helping them become a reality. To apply, visit www.nature.scot slash funding hyphen and hyphen projects slash future hyphen roots hyphen fund hyphen 2024. More than half of Scots say they have no religion. For the first time in Scotland's census, a majority of people say they have no religion, according to a new report released by National Records of Scotland. A total of 51.1% in Scotland's census in 2022 responded no religion, up from 36.7% in 2011. No religion was the most common response in almost every council area in Scotland. Across Scotland as a whole, 20.4% responded Church of Scotland, down from 32.4% in 2011. The next largest religious groups were Roman Catholic, 13.3%, Other Christian, 5.1%, and Muslim, 2.2%. The results are part of a wide range of statistics on ethnic group, national identity, language and religion from the 2022 census, with key themes including migration and Scotland's ageing population. This is the first of seven reports on different census topics which will be released over the next few months. John Roth Smith, Census Statistics Director said, These statistics give, give a fascinating insight into religion, ethnicity, national identity and language use across Scotland and how they have changed over the years. It's exciting to publish this first release and this, along with our other census data to come, will help local and central government businesses and charities to plan services in the years ahead. The percentage of people in Scotland with a minority ethnic background increased from 8.2% in the previous census to 12.9% in 2022. The percentage of people who said Scottish was their only national identity increased since the previous census from 62.4% to 65.5%. Those who said their only national identity was British also increased 8.4% to 13.9%. The percentage who said they felt both Scottish and British decreased 18.3% to 8.2%. The census also found that 2.5% of people aged 3 and over had some skills in Gaelic in 2022. This is an increase of 43,100 people since 2011 when 1.7% was recorded. The percentage of people with some skills in Scotland also increased to 46.2% in 2022 from 37.7% in 2011. A total of 2.2% of people aged 3 and over can also use British Sign Language, BSL. Family Announcements Deaths Go Janet Of Kirk and Talk formerly of Harrogate and Oxford. Suddenly but peacefully at home on May 7th, 2024, much-loved daughter of Joyce and Tom, sister of Alison, sister-in-law of Colin, and niece of Hazel and John, a good neighbour and friend to many, will be very greatly missed by all. Private service for family and friends, Glasgow, May 31st. Donations in lieu of flowers in honour of Janet's memory to Medicines Sands Frontier. For further details, please contact Co-op Funeral Care, Kirk and Talk, on telephone number 0141 
776-2273. That phone number again for the Co-op Funeral Care Kirkintillock is 0141 776 2273. Jameson, Dennis W. Peacefully on May 16th, 2024 at Springvale Care Home, Lennoxtown. Beloved husband of Jenny, a much-loved dad and papa. Funeral service will take place on Monday, June 3rd, 2024 at Co-op Funeral Care, Kirkintillock for 1.15pm. Thereafter to Old Isle Cemetery for 2pm. No flowers, please. Donations, if desired, to Alzheimer's Scotland. Scott, Wilma, peacefully on May 18th, 2024, surrounded by her family. Beloved wife of Murray, a much-loved mum of Karen and Stephen, and mother-in-law of Tracy. Committal will take place on Thursday, June 6th, 2024, at Dal Dowie Crematorium for 10am, followed by a service of thanksgiving at St. Columbus Parish Church, Kirkintillock, for 11.15am. Family flowers only. Donations, if desired, to the British Thyroid Foundation. From the Kirkintillock and Bishop Briggs Herald, date Wednesday, the 29th of May, Let's talk. Letters page. Please send your letters via email to kirkyherald at jnscotland.co.uk That's K-I-R-K-Y-H-E-R-A-L-D at sign J-N-S-C-O-T-L-A-N-D dot C-O dot U-K and write letters in the subject field. Please keep letters a maximum of 300 words. Letters cannot be published without a name and postal address. Also include a daytime phone number if possible. We reserve the right to edit any letter. Thank you very much. Sir, I'd like to thank the people who stopped our boat sinking in South Bank Marina. We were just sitting off to the Falkirk Wheel to use the dry dock facilities. When we heard a water spraying noise and discovered a leak in the bow thruster tube, this would have caused us to sink. With applied pressure from my husband, he covered the hole, and there he sat for an hour whilst I moved the valuables and sought help. The people who came to our raid were the 4th and Clyde Canal Society. They told us to get to the slipway, slipway a mile away and ram into the bank to try to get the bow thruster tu- tu- tube above water. We managed to rig up a sign from from weed hatch tape and with one person holding that and the other in the stern we applied it to the slippage. We were still slightly below the water line so we emptied the water and tried again. A couple of days later the whole society hauled us out with a newly repaired winch. The bow thruster tube were quickly welded over by Neil overseen by his boss Robert. Sorry I don't have surnames. The members of the FNCCS are all volunteers who give up their free time to support the beautiful resource we have in our community. It's time to thank them and support them. If they hadn't been there, the boat would have sunk. I would have got my husband off, I'm sure. The moral is, boats and time wait for no man. Yours, etc. Jenny. Mostly harmless, boat name, but very nearly harmful. A positive choice. Sir, I recently listened to a recording of Danny Darling talking about his book, Shattered Nation, which chronicles the UK's decline. Darling, Professor of Human Geography at Oxford, told the story of a European country in 2020 that, when faced with the cost of living crisis and a pandemic, convened a government agency committee and introduced a payment of £10 per week for each child under six and families receiving benefits. In 2022, this was then increased to £25 per week for each child under 16. For a family with three children, this meant an extra £4,000 per year. 
He asked the audience to guess which country he was talking about. Someone immediately responded, Scotland. When he poses this question to an English audience, it takes 10 guesses to land in Scotland. That's because England has no idea what Scotland has done to blunt Westminster welfare cuts or anything else for that matter. The media doesn't report it and Gordon Brown doesn't talk about it. Professor Doring said, The Scottish child payment is responsible for the biggest reduction in child poverty in a year anywhere in Europe since 1989. Scotland accomplished this within the Westminster imposed Barnet Formula budgetary straitjacket. This shows that alleviating poverty is a political choice, not one the Conservative or English Labour are willing to make. Yours etc. Leah Gunn Barnett Barrett by email. Monster of own creation, sir. Over the years we've become, become accustomed to Scotland's nationalists perpetually blaming others for what goes wrong and, of course, for berating opponents for doing exactly what the SNP are most guilty of doing themselves. That line has long ago worn thin. And yet we have the latest emanations from the SNP ranks, from none other than former leader Nicola Sturgeon. She deemed it fit to have a go at the poisonous state of political debate in Scotland. Most people would agree with her summary of the situation today, but I wager most fair-minded observers would place her as the instigator and at the very centre of that poisonous debate. Who could forget her infamous rant about detesting Tories? Not the Tory party, not Tory policies, no, simply be one of the million plus Scots Tories was enough to earn her scorn and hatred. Then, more recently, she had a go at young people with no experience of life for finding jobs and positions for political parties and are miles out of their depth and with no understanding of how a normal working person survives. Again, fair comment. But again, the former leader of the party under whose wing this phenomenon erupted they had, remember, a 20-year-old university student elected as a candidate at the height of their dominance. She's fit to criticise the monster she has helped create. The SNP irony meter is again off the scale. It is little wonder they stagger on towards political oblivion. Yours, etc. Alexandra Mackay. Address supplied. And that was Let's Talk, the Kirky Herald Letters page, on Wednesday the 29th of May. Stay the Night is now expanding. Forestley and Land Scotland's popular Stay the Night will see the addition of several new locations this season. The Black Isle, Loch Lomond, Loch Awe and Aberdeenshire are the latest scenic destinations allowing visitors to overnight responsibly in FLS managed forests and feature as part of around 40 sites stretching from the Scottish borders to the Highlands. Stay the Night will be run until October the 31st Self-contained motorhomes and camper vans with all facilities, including toilet inside the vehicle and crucially used inside, will be permitted to park overnight in a selection of car parks for one night only. The reopening of the additional state of the night sites comes on the back of a successful winter trial that saw a selection of car parks remain open for overnight stays. The usual modest charge of £7 per stay, payable via Ringo by app or phone, will be in effect at most sites with a few charging £10 and offering chemical waste disposal. Alan Chalmers, FLA's Visitors Planning Manager, said, We are looking forward to welcoming visitors back to all of our state of the sites, including five new locations. Like all their sites, the latest additions, such as Tarbot Isle on the shores of Loch Lomond and Lerney on the Black Isle, offer visitors the chance to slow down and enjoy some of Scotland's breathtaking scenery. Stay the night helps to meet the growing demand for one night stopovers and encourages people to stop at locations they would otherwise have passed through. Once again, we ask people using our sites to follow guidance. That includes no fires or barbecues, taking away rubbish, keeping noise levels down and finding alternative options if the car park is already full. It was also pleasing to see how successful the stay in the night winter trial proved to be, with visitors taking up the opportunity to overnight responsibly in the participating car parks. Full details of all of the sites is at www.forestryandland.co.uk. Yours etc. Alan Chalmers, 
www.gov.seot slash stay hyphen the hyphen night online Today states are for one night only between 6pm and 10am with no return for 48 hours no booking system is in place and it operates on a first come first serve basis Good day to you, my name's Philip and I'm going to be reading the Kirky Herald Church news. And first of all, we go to Lions of Union Parish Church. Their Sunday service this Sunday is at 11am and they provide a creche for babies and toddlers. Young people are also welcome to the Lighthouse and Bible class. A live stream of the service is available on YouTube via their website. Youth Cathy Thursdays, 3.45 to 5pm, a place where young people can hang out, relax and have a good time after a long day at school. Each week there is a free snack. Oh, that's worth going along to. Uh, with lots of different things to do, such as games, consoles, table tennis, arts and crafts, board games and more. The coffee pot is open on Fridays, 10 to noon, in the new hall for teas and coffee. And art for seniors Monday, the 3rd of June at 1.30 in the New Hall. Enjoy creating a piece of art under the step-by-step -step guidance of artist Bev McCluskey. No experience needed. Contact Margaret on 0779-216-8826 to book your place. And then we have Messy Church on Saturday the 8th of June from 4 to 5pm in the New Hall. Everyone is welcome to come along to a fun-filled hour challenges and crafts and experiments will be happening during that hour. And then we go to Home Church in Kirkintillich on Lammermuir Road. Home Church Kirkintillich also have a sister church, Home Church, in the East End in Carmyle. And uh, it's a church for all ages. Yes, my soul finds rest in God, my hope comes from Him. And you find that in Psalm 62. And Sunday the 1st, 9.30 and 11.30am, there's worship service with communion followed by refreshments. A warm welcome awaits you at either service, which will be identical. Children's Sunday School at both services. Home Church Carmel is at 10am and 6.30pm. On Tuesdays, they have the engine room at 9.30, which is uh, for biblical teaching. Bible study on Zoom at 2.30. And then Wednesdays, uh, we have a prayer meeting at Carmel at 10.15am. Study groups now called Boiler Room in church at 715 except the last Wednesday in the month, which will be a prayer meeting. Thursdays, there's football. Fridays, crafts and coffee, 10 to noon. And the youth group meet at 7.30pm. Prayer meeting except last Friday in the month. Home radio is also available every day. Yeah, if you check out the home radio uh, on FM or uh, download the Home Church uh, radio ad, um, or app, I should say. And if you'll tune in on a Monday night between 8 and 9, you'll hear my dulcet tones sharing what God's doing across the world. It's always good to tune into Home Radio because there's lots of good music, good chat, and good informative information as well. And for more information about uh, Home Church, check out their website. Uh, for the latest information about both churches. Then we move back to Lindsay Old Parish Church. Sunday worship at 11am, led by Mrs Julie Harty. A crest is available for children under three. The quilt and craft group meet every Wednesday, 10 to, to noon, in the session room. Thursday club is on June the 6th, from 2pm to 4pm in the church hall. Teas, coffees, games, knit and chat, come and sing is on Tuesday, June the 11th from 1.15 to 2.45. The Dementia Friendly Singing Group meets in the church hall. A warm welcome weighs all and of course a cuppa with some delicious home baking. Please feel free to come along and sing. Then to Bishop Briggs, Colston Well Park Church. Now that the summer is with us, is it? Hmm, okay. Uh, some days it's summer and some days it's spring. <laughs> well, why not join this Sunday for our morning service at Colston Well Park Church, starting at 11am. The service will be conducted by uh, the Minister Malcolm Cuthbertson, followed by tea, coffee and conversation in the church hall. Whether you come for the first time or just for a change, 
it would be good to see you there. This Monday, the Art Club continues from 10 to 1pm. And if interested in displaying your artistic talents, pop in for a chat and coffee or phone uh, Ramsey on 077-09-584-680 for further information. This Wednesday, the Colston Tea Break or Community Drop-In continues from 11 to 12.30 a.m. That is, anyone and everyone is welcome for a good food, good chat and good company. Come along and it's free. Then we move to Kemio Parish Church. Our first Sunday club for children returns this Sunday. The sacrament for Holy Communion will be held later in the service and Reverend Susan Anderson will lead our worship. The morning service starts as usual at 11am and everyone is welcome to join us both in church and on our YouTube channel. The service on YouTube can be watched live as it is streamed or later at a time that suits you. You can find our channel by simply searching for Kim Your Bishop Briggs on YouTube. Teas and coffees and a time of fellowship follows the end of the church service. The most up-to-date details of all our groups that are currently running may be found on the WhatsApp section of their website, kemure-church.co.uk. To find us on Facebook, just search for Kemure Paris Church. And if you'd like to join our WhatsApp group or receive the Bible studies from ABC, then email us at kemurechurch at icloud.com. And then we move out to the outskirts to Milton and Campsie to, and to the parish church there. Thanks to all who celebrated thy kingdom come in Pentecost by walking the walk on a labyrinth and praising God at her ecumenical event in Battlefield Park. We continue on the theme of the Lord's Prayer at our house groups which meet this week all in the Josiah Spears. Monday at 7pm. Tuesday at 7pm and Wednesday at 2pm. Cafe Connect is on Tuesday morning. Time to Pray is on Wednesday evening at 7pm, followed by Go Mad Wednesday uh, Workhouse at 7.45pm. We're now at £3,230 with our street collection for Christian Aid. Well done to everyone. We can now add in £1,080, which was raised at the Anderson Singers concert. Again, huge thanks to everyone for a great effort. The sponsor, 70k in May, will continue till the end of May. Adding it all together, we should reach a total of £5,000 for Christian Aid. Wow, great sum. Well done to all those who supported and helped out. And our summer weeks at Summer Sunday Worship <laughs> will be tracing the story of the early church found in the Book of Acts. For next Sunday, we need a photograph of you walking, running, jumping, leaping, climbing, or with a walking stick. Yes, preparations are now being made for the SU camp at Gowan Bank during the first week of school holidays and the Go Mad uh, beginning July the 28th. Can you help with prayer, accommodation, finance, hands-on? Before that, there will be Go Mad Extra on Sunday, June the 9th from 1pm to 3pm. Job form for registration is now online. These events I just mentioned, Go Mad and all that, are there all kind of youth events uh, being held each year uh, at Milton Camp Say Parish Church and a great church for all the family. Then we move back to Kirk and Tullock, to the Church of God at Regent Hall, Regent Street. On Sunday there will be a family praise service at 4pm. This will feature our praise band Video presentations and guest speaker Colin Brooks from Wish of Refreshments will also be served after the service. A warm welcome to all who are able to join us. The Coffee Corner is now closed for the summer break and will recommence on Wednesday, August the 21st. For up-to-date and further information on our services, visit the website at allthews.regenthall.org. The Bible says, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this is not from ourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. And you find that in Ephesians 2, a great Bible verse for us to live by and to know. And then we move to Bishop Briggs, to St James Church. And the minister there is uh, Paul Watson. And there is a communion service on Thursday, May the 30th at 11am. And on Sunday, June the 2nd, at 9 a.m. in the chapel and at 10.30 in the church with hymns and hymns for during the pre-service prayers 
from 10.10 10, uh, to 10.15 a.m. in the chapel. There will be time then to commit to the service to God and to pray for the needs of the community. Church service of prayer for healing after the main service in the chapel immediately after the 10.30 service. Everyone is welcome to come along to any of these services, tea and coffee and fellowship afterwards on Sunday, June the 2nd from 3pm to 4pm. There is a session of Crafty Kids in the hall. The theme is Summer Fruits. All families are very welcome to come along and enjoy activities together. There are also other virtual services and groups. For up-to-date information, refer to the social media, Facebook, uh, St James Alice, Bishop Briggs, the website, www.stjamesbishopbriggs.org.uk And now we're moving to Springfield Cambridge Church. They are in Bishop Briggs. Morning worship on Sunday, June the 2nd will be conducted by the Minister Ian Taylor in the sanctuary at 11am. An offering will be taken during the service. Please place your offering in the offering plate as they are passed around the congregation. Tea and coffee will be served in the Cameron Hall after morning worship. Come and enjoy the fellowship. Uh, it would be great to have you along. The Sunday School meets in room 2 where crash facilities are also available. Morning worship is also being live streamed on the Springfield Cambridge Church YouTube channel. A link to this can be found on the Springfield Cambridge Church website www.springfieldcambridge.org.uk and on Facebook page where up-to-date information about events and church organisations can be found. There will be a service of worship in the Springfield Chapel on Wednesday, May the 29th from 11.10 to 11.30 followed by tea and coffee in the Hall of Fellowship. The Guild is inviting the congregation to join them in supporting the Eastern Bartonshire Food Bank Warehouse by bringing donations and leaving them in the cupboard in the cloakroom. A list is attached to the cupboard door, uh, identifying specific items especially requested. Holy Communion will be celebrated on Sunday, June the 2nd at 11am. And then there's a summer concert reminder. On Friday, June the 7th, the City of Glasgow Wind Orchestra will hold a summer concert in the church at 7.30pm. Tickets for adults are £10, concessions £8, children under 12 are free. Everyone is very welcome. Now to Cadder Parish Church, beside the canal. For full details, see the website, cadderchurch.org. We look forward to welcoming you this Sunday to our morning service. The service will be led by the Minister John McGregor and the Probation Minister Chris Gordon and music is led by Javier Jose. Cadder kids and Chris meet at the church at the start of the service and then go to the North Hall. All are welcome. This Sunday we have our communion services in church at 10.30am in the South Hall at 3pm and our church services are videoed and recorded and are available from the church website. Tea and coffee served after each service. In the food bank, if you wish to donate to the local food bank, you can bring your donations of food to the church or the coffee shop. Early Fellowship meets in person in the South Hall Chapel at 9.30am on Tuesday and Thursday and also on Zoom. Messy Play meets on Tuesday and Thursdays in the South, South Hall from 10.30 to 11.30 at Cadder Chat and Play meets on Saturday, June 2nd from 10am to noon. The theme <laughs> this time is Beach Party. A fun time for families to come together and to chat and play in Cadder South Hall. Cadder Coffee Shop is open on a Tuesday to Thursday from 10 to 2 p.m. and a Friday 10 a.m. to noon. You can bring, uh, if you come along, you'll be made most welcome. And the next film night is on Friday, June the 14th, in the hall at 7 p.m. for 7.30 start. The film is The Great Escaper, starring... Michael Caine and Glenda Jackson. Tickets are priced five pounds and available from the fellowship team, and all are welcome. And now we move to Torrance. Torrance Parish Church. That is, the morning service in person is at ten thirty a.m. Conducted by the minister Stuart Irvin. During the service, the youngsters meet together in creche, junior church, and frog, which I believe is the youth part of it. To join the service online, Torrance Parish Church Online dot Church. 
Cafe is open every Wednesday, 9am till noon, for tea, coffee and delicious home baking. Why not come and taste for yourself? And the Boys Brigade meet from 7 till 9pm, P7 to S6. To find out about regular weekly activities, check out the website for or the what's on at www.tpc.org.uk. And lastly, in Kirkintilla, St Columba's Men's Club. St Columba's Main Club of Kirkintilla meets in the halls of St Columba's Church in Old Isle Road. And it's, it's not necessary to be a church member or attached to a church to join. The club, which has been in existence for many years, provides a chance for men to spend a Monday evening in a very relaxed company and to participate in activities such as pool, snooker, carpet bowls, darts, table tennis and dominoes, or simply sit and chat. Membership comes not only from Kirk and Dillard, but also from Lindsay, Cumberland, Milton Campsey and Bearstem. All men will be made welcome. And that's the church news for this week. Thank you for listening. I hope you find one of these interesting to maybe pop along to church. Um, if you can, that would be great. Or tune into home radio and hear my dulcet tones on a Monday night between 8 and 9. District News General, Wednesday the 29th of May. Pepper needs patience and love. Pepper, a five-year-old French bulldog, is a stunning girl who values trust and patience in her human companions. She sees her tranquil, adult-only home where she can be the sole pet to thrive in her own space. Pepper is a sensitive soul who can take time to build a trusting relationship with her owners. Although Pepper is affectionate with familiar faces, she is cautious around strangers. Pepper is house-trained, happy being left alone for a couple of hours and enjoys travelling in the car. If you can provide a home for Pepper or any of the 40 dogs currently available for rehoming, contact 015 876 873 459 Twitter at sign DT underscore West Decoder and Instagram at sign Dogs Trust underscore West Calder. Charity Walk Clocking up the miles for Mary's Meals Geraldine McFall, who travelled 2,000 miles on foot from Glasgow to Rome in 2023, is now taking part in the charities from Dalmali to Malawi Challenge in June. Last year, Geraldine McFall, 55, walked all the way from her home in Glasgow to Rome travelling 2,000 miles in food in six months. She raised more than £7,500 for Mary's Meals. To top off Geraldine's extraordinary journey, she even met the Pope on her arrival in Rome. Mary's Meals feeds more than 2.4 million children in 17 countries across the world. The promise of a daily school meal encourages desperately poor children into the classroom where an education is the key to their dreams of a brighter future. Geraldine says... Last summer I walked to Rome and met the Pope. Now I'm walking to Malawi for charity. I'll really be walking around my local area, but our cumulative miles will equal 7,000 miles from Dalmali to Malawi. Mary's Meals is an incredible charity and I'm so pleased to support them again this year. I'd love for you to join me in June because you can easily turn your miles into meals for hungry little ones. The key thing to an active challenge is not to worry about how fast or far you're going, because every step adds up. It's an amazing sense of achievement when you reach your goal and I can't wait to share that feeling with you all. By signing up to the challenge, participants will take part in a virtual journey from Dalmali, the village in the Highlands of Scotland where Mary's Meals are founded, to Malawi, where the charity served its first life-changing school meals. Participants can take part in from Dalmali to Malawi in any way they choose, whether walking, running, swimming or cycling. The money raised will help to feed hungry children living in the world's poorest countries. Dan McNally, Head of Grassroots Engagement at Mary's Meals said, We were all so inspired by Geraldine's walk to Rome last summer and I hope that she can inspire you to take on from Dalmali to Malawi this June. It only cost £19.15 and pence to feed a child with Mary's Meals for a school year. That's 10p a meal. So any money you can raise makes a real difference. 
By taking part, people can change the lives of children like Lapukini from Malawi. Please visit www.marysmeals.org.uk slash Dalmawi to Malawi. That's www.marysmeals.org.uk slash D-A-L-M-A-L-L-Y hyphen T-O hyphen M-A-L-A-W-I District News If you would like to highlight your club's activities and meetings, please get in touch at this email address kirkyherald at gnscotland.co.uk Public Notices Planning Notices Town and Country Planning Development Management Procedure Scotland Regulations 2013 Notice under Regulation 7 Brackets 2 Brackets B Pre-Application Consultation by the Prospective Applicant Proposed Development of Site at Cleddon's Playing Field West of Mosgiel Gardens and Alloway Grove, Kirkintilloch, comprising of a mix of family housing units with associated parking and landscaping. An online virtual exhibition will be available from the 3rd of June through to the 14th of June at www.coltartearley, that's C-O-L-T-A-R-T-E-A-R-L-E, E Y dot Wix site that's W I X S I T E dot com forward slash Cledens, which is C L E D D A N S. A public consultation event will be held at the Hillhead Community Centre, one hundred and sixty nine Meckle Hill Road, Kirkintilloch. Glasgow, G66, 2JT, between 3pm and 7pm on Thursday the 13th of June. Persons wishing to comment on the proposal should do so by Friday the 14th of June to Gregor McMillan, Coltar Early Architects, that's C-O-L-T-A-R-T, E A R L E Y A R C H I T E C T S five five nine Sucky Hall Street, Charing Cross, Glasgow G three seven P Q. You can also email at info at coltart hyphen early dot co dot uk. That's I-N-F-O, at sign, C-O-L-T-A-R-T, hyphen, E-A-R-L-E-Y, dot co, dot UK. This notice does not relate to a planning application. Comments should not be made to Eastern Bartonshire Council. Please note that any comments made to the prospective applicant are not representations to the planning authority. If a planning application is subsequently submitted to Eastern Bartonshire Council, normal neighbour notification will be undertaken at the time by the Council, and you will have the opportunity to make formal representations regarding the proposal at that time. Road Test Genesis GV60 All mod cons for the classier customer Hyundai's luxury arm comes up with the goods once again, writes Camel Stewart. And if you haven't guessed already, this is about cars. The high-tech, extremely well-specified Genesis GV60 SUV, which has the honour of being the brand's first electric vehicle, is packed to its classy gunnels with all manner of technolog- technological innovations and tasteful galoshy pattern design accents that's very posh crisscross highlights to you and me. Just to put the Genesis into context, 
it's a luxury arm of the Hyundai Group, so like all vehicles under this umbrella, including Kias, the cars are built in South Korea, and like most luxury models, it does not have to rely on high sales volume. Quality, not quantity, is the name of the game here. And there is no doubt that the GV60 is a genuine premium product. It sits on the same dedicated electric platform as the multi award winning Hyundai Ionic 5 and the wonderful Kia EV6, and is classed as high performance. It is powered by a 77.4 kilowatt battery, which can be charged from 10% to 80% in 18 minutes. Official figures put it 0 to 62 miles per hour at 4 seconds, BHP at 241, and top speed at 146 miles per hour. But why would you dash about in such a splendidly luxurious vehicle? Aerodynamically styled, with a coupe silhouette, it is clearly a slick looking car from the outside, but inside is where the real drama lies. Press the start button and the dash displays multi screens with a host of information available at the touch of a finger. At the same time, a rotating crystal sphere between the two front seats, complete with heating and ventilation, massage functions and power adjustment, rolls into view. The beauty of this aesthetically pleasing gear selector is it's enhanced by its colour changing ability. The front seats can be fully reclined while the car is charging. In addition, the driver's ergo motion seat is automatically adjusted according to the driving mode. In comfort, side support is less pronounced, while sport mode delivers firmer side bolstering. The system automatically loads up the driver's preferences as regards seat and steering wheel position, head-up display, etc., and is coupled with fingerprint recognition as an additional security measure. As to space, the two upper front have got plenty of leg and headroom. Space for the three rear seat occupants is slightly compromised by the sloping roof, but that does not detract from the luxury of the interior. The GV60 is available with either a 2WD or a 4WD layout and three different power outputs. The RWD Premium model delivers 226 bhp, Sport AWD a total of 314 bhp and the Top Banana Sports Plus AWD, tested, can achieve a combined output of 482 bhp in short bursts, courtesy of the boost button which doubles the oomph. The Sport Plus performance is further enhanced by the limited slip diff which ensures maximum torque delivery to the wheels in poor conditions. Drivers can also add a virtual driving sound, the brum brum of their choice. With all the technologies and electronic gizmos attached to the GV60, it'll come as no surprise that on the road it's as smooth as silk. And, while all the electronic wizardry comes at a price, it's not as eye-watering as you might expect, starting at around £54,105 for the entry-level premium, but rapidly jumping up to £67,000 £1,705 for the AWD Sport Plus. The car in fact, Genesis GV60. Price, from £54,105. Power, 77.4 kilowatt battery. Transmission, automatic. Top speed, 146 miles per hour. 0 to 62 miles per hour, 4 seconds. Range, 289 miles. CO2 emissions, 0. Callum as Scottish Par 3 Champ. This article was written by Martin Dempster and is being read by me, Corey. Kirk and Talk golfer Calm Fife would love to see more layouts like the Drevnik course at Paul Laurie Golf Centre. Fife is the new Scottish Par 3 champion after winning an event presented by Five Star Sports Agency on the outskirts of Aberdeen. An opening to under par 52 left Fife sitting three shots off the pace at the halfway stage after Jack Brun had set the pace with his five under first day salvo. But as Brun then had to settle for a second round 59, 
It was former Scottish Golf Men's Order of Merit winner, Fife, who stormed to victory as he went 10 shots better. Sign for halves of the 26-23, which included a burst of three consecutive birdies, Fife, who played his amateur golf at Codder, finished with a 7-under total. Picking up a £3,000 top prize, he won by a shot from Will Marshall, 51-51, and Sam Locke, 50-52, as they shared second spot. Legends Tour player Greg Hutchison, 51-53, finished 4th on 4-under, one shot better than Craig Laurie, 54-51. Fife, who turned 27 on Monday, said, I'm very happy with this win, as it's a proper test of golf. You don't really think a par 3 course can be like that, but you're hitting clubs from 160 to 200 yards, and the greens are really tight with big slopes off the edges of them. It's really good as it sharpens up your iron play, short game and putting. It's lots of fun playing a course like this as there are lots of birdies to be had. It definitely helps sharpen your game, and it's a pity there aren't more facilities like it in Scotland. What Paul Laurie has set up there is fantastic and it's a credit to him as it's growing the game up there for sure. DP World Tour player David Law, 53-54, ended up in a tie for 11th, on one under the only 12 players finished in red figures. Fife followed up by finishing third in the Tartan Pro Tour season opener at Montrose. That article was written by Martin Dempster, and it was read by me, Corey. City duo extending their stay at club. This article was written by Brian Yule, and is being read by me, Corey. Glasgow City defender Chloe Warrington and forward Emily Whelan have signed new deals with the club. Warrington joined from Celtic in the summer of 2022 and the fullback has made over 40 appearances in all competitions. She said, I'm delighted to sign another deal with Glasgow City. I have really enjoyed the past two years here as a player. I feel like I have still got a lot more to give to this club, and I'm excited to see where the next couple of years takes me. Whelan arrived from Birmingham City at the same time and the Republic of Ireland International has scored 23 goals in just over 70 games. She said, I am delighted to continue at Glasgow City. I have loved my first couple of seasons here so far, and feel like I have learned a lot. I am keen to continue to further develop at this club, and I am looking forward to doing my very best to contribute to the team and our aims and ambitions for the year ahead. Head coach Leanne Ross said, It is easy to forget Chloe is still only 21, with what she has already achieved in the game. Chloe is brilliant to work with. She comes in every day, keeps her head down and gives everything in training. Her winning mentality is clear to see. She is tenacious, determined and 100% focused on carrying out her role in the team to the best of her ability. I am confident we can help her to develop further and play an important role in delivering future success for the club. From the moment Emily arrived, it was clear to see the many positive qualities she would add to our squad on and off the pitch. I'm not sure I have come across a player that works as hard as she does in training or in games. I often wonder where she gets her energy from. It's so important to have players with the work ethic, ability and positive energy Emily brings to our squad. As well as having a huge influence on the pitch, Emily is also a popular figure in the dressing room. Her happy and positive nature is infectious among the group. It is exciting to have the opportunity to work with Emily for a while longer 
and hopefully help her to continue her development and unlock her full potential. That article was written by Brian Yule and it was read by me, Corey. Rob Roy unlucky to lose out in the final. This article is unattributed, but it is being read by me, Corey. Kirk and Tillich Rob Roy were unable to end the season with silverware as they lost 2-0 to East Kilbride in the final of the South Challenge Cup. However, Rob Roy certainly gave a good account of themselves against the Lowland League champions. Indeed, there was little to suggest there will be two leagues between the sides next season, as Rob Roy threatened from a series of corners. As the half progressed, East Kilbride came more into it, but barely tested keeper Kyle Aitken as it remained goalless at the break. Whatever the East Kilbride boss, Mickey Kennedy, said to his players at half-time seemed to work, and they took the lead after 54 minutes. A lob into the box by Kai Montagu caused some confusion in the Rob Roy defence, and Joao Baldi was able to bundle the ball in. East Kilbride passed up a couple of good chances to double their lead but a second arrived on 70 minutes when Andrew Sterling picked out Keir Samson. Rob Roy pushed to get back into the match, but were unable to find the net as East Kilbride lifted the trophy. Meanwhile, Rob Roy has handed out the end of season awards. Adam Kettings was named Coaches and Committee Player of the Year, while Kean Gilday was Players Player of the Year. Club captain Scott Walker received the Supporters Player of the Year, as well as recognition for playing his 200 games for Rob Roy. On loan, Motherwell keeper Kel Aitken picked up the Davy Smith Award for the Most Promising Player. That article was unattributed, but it was read by me, Corey. Jack signs for a third time at Tigers to replace Lee. This article was written by Phil Lanning and is being read by me, Corey. Jack Smith has joined Glasgow Tigers for a third time following Lee Complins being handed a 20-month ban from the sport. Smith, 25, was previously with Tigers in 2017 and 2021 and had been guesting for a month during Complin's initial 30-day suspension. However, with Complin being found guilty by the SCB of using a banned substance, allegedly to treat a mouth abscess, and unable to ride until 2026, the club moved to tie up Smith. Team boss Cammy Brown said, It was a fairly obvious move for us to secure Jack on a permanent basis. He's done a fabulous job as a guest covering for Lee after he had been suspended. To be honest, Jack was our match winner in the home meeting with Oxford and Workington. It's a very important role in the team and we need those sort of scores from Jack. We know he's capable of that and probably a lot more. Jack's away form will also be pivotal for the success of the team. He's now a very experienced lad. This is his third stint in the Tigers team and we want him to kick on and show what ability he has got. The good thing is that he's not really a new rider. We needed a settled team and we have to get some momentum together now. Tigers were due to host Redcar in the championship on Friday but heavy rain left the track waterlogged and the match was postponed. They will travel to Edinburgh Monarchs this Friday in the BSN series, looking to avenge their superheat defeat and then head to Redcar the next day. That article was written by Phil Lanning and it was read by me, Corey. That concludes this week's edition of the Kirkendale Herald podcast. Please remember to subscribe to our channels at Tune Review and to tell your friends about our service.